Welcome back everybody to Tavaru Island in Fiji and you know what, after seven long lay days, the waves finally popped up again and competition resumed out of cloud break for round four and what a round it was. Let's go straight to the tape. In heat number one, it was Luke Stedman versus B. Durbage in the early morning hours and the conditions were pretty solid. Steady had a nice crack off the top early, getting off to a good start in this heat. But B. Durbage, a.k.a. the White Fijian, came firing back with a solid backhand attack. Huge snaps off the top, and B. kept finding the barrel. Durbage, two riding his way into the quarterfinals. Yeah, I was stoked to get through that heat, it was kind of slow and, and uh, yeah, the conditions are nice, it's just not too many waves. Next up was the matchup between Timmy Reyes of California and Australian Taj Burrow. Timmy was looking to jump out to an early lead, but ran into trouble on the inside low tide section. Taz jumped right back, answering, but had problems in the same area. But Taj would go on to make adjustments, and his surfing from that point on looked unstoppable. Taj Burrow, wicked backhand attack, on to the quarterfinals. Definitely went my way, and I felt uh, really warmed up towards the end of the heat, and felt great. So, yeah, I'm stoked to notch that one up. In what turned out to be one of the best matchups of the day, Bobby Martinez threaded a couple barrels versus Ace Bucking. These two fiery goofy footers went head to head and battled all the way till the end with some solid surfing. Bobby jumped out to a commanding lead with this 8.5, a solid series of lip bashes, followed by a nice little two. Ace did his best to answer back and it was a valiant effort, but he just couldn't catch Bobby in the end. Martinez moving on. The next heat was the most anticipated heat of the day. Damian Hobgood, a two-time Tavarua champion, versus Kelly Slater, no slouch himself. Hobgood, looking a little sticky, deciding to go with a little longer board this morning. But Kelly was looking very precise. Carving and smashing, the king looked like he was feeling it. With conditions deteriorating rapidly, it was getting harder for Hobgood to respond as the tubes began to shut down. But Kelly kept the blows coming, taking the smaller waves with the open face and advancing on to the quarterfinals. You know, nothing special, just sort of one of those standard, get a couple waves and hope you clinch it. It's a bummer when, when um, you know, two guys who have a good record out here come against each other, you know, early on. So it'd be nice to be more like in a quarter or semi. 
in the next heat, it was Mick Fanning, the world champ, against Dayon Nev in very trying conditions as the wind switched and picked up, making things very difficult for these surfers. But the champ, Mick Fanning, grinded this one out. Fanning sends Day on packing and advances. Yeah, just sort of just try to. I knew there wasn't many waves, you know, the heat before with Kelly, they only had a couple of sixes and Damo only had a couple of fours or whatever. So I just knew I just had to get started early and um, really put the pressure on. Next up, it was Chris Ward versus CJ Hobgood, and Wardo jumped out to an early lead with a strong backhand attack. <laughs> But CJ would keep it close the whole way through as these two traded blows through the heat. Then in the waning moments, Hobgood scored this very hard to find tube in the afternoon froth and continued to rip this wave all the way into the quarterfinals. I mean, at least there was waves in the heat. There was a couple fun waves, so me and Wardo were, about to, were able to surf. Wardo was ripping, man. He was doing some good turns, and fortunate enough for me, I was able to find a couple barrels. Uh, there wasn't a lot out there, but um, no, if he would have kept doing turns, it would have been over for me. But uh, live to see another day. Hopefully, I can get my act together next heat. Heat number seven was a battle between the big, powerful backhanders with Joel Parkinson facing Poncho Sullivan. Parco found some room to move as things were getting dicey out there. Parker was looking extremely smooth despite the fact that he was surfing in conditions that were anything but. Meanwhile, Puncho kept looking for the cover ups but couldn't find much else afterward. So Parko, in form, moves on to the next round. I kept my dream alive and mm -hmm. it's still going. And what had to be the upset of the day was Adriano D'Souza taking out Freddy Potassia D'Souza set things up in motion early with a whopping 9.0. Of course, Freddie, never one to roll over, came firing back with some beautiful combinations. But D'Souza kept nabbing the open face waves and taking advantage of them. Freddie needed a 7.6 to catch him in the late going, but after a long wait, the judges decided this ride was only a 7.3, ending Freddie's run. Adriano into the quarterfinals. Yeah, really, really happy in this moment, so uh, just have fun and uh, still focus enough for quarters tomorrow, so hopefully tomorrow I have a really good wives. So there you have it, another stellar day of competition here in Fiji, round four now in the books which means we're moving on to the quarterfinals and there's some fantastic matchups coming up, starting off with B. Durbich, who's ranked number three in the world, versus Taj Burrow, followed up by Kelly Slater and Bobby Martinez. What a matchup that one's gonna be. Of course, right behind them, CJ Hobgood and Mick Fanning. 
And the final quarterfinal of the day will be Joel Parkinson against Adriano D'Souza. Competition looks like it could get underway right back here tomorrow. Stay tuned, everyone.